fresh off our lunch break, yep. we got a decom to revisit. <laughs> yes, we do. Uh, do your little jingle. Decom. Decom. <laughs> decom. Revisited. I'm always going to change it. <laughs> Every week. <laughs> uh, every single week is going to be something different. Do-do-do-do. So yes, welcome to our new decom revisited. Last the last one that we did was Brink, um, which Elijah and I both agreed was probably the best decom movie that they can that they can offer so far. Um, so far, um, so I gave Elijah uh, two options. Uh, we either continue with Zedon doing the sequel, or we go very weird route. And uh, I'm so happy that Elijah said let's go to weird route. Mm -hmm. um, is there some regret on my part? We'll see. Um, um, uh, so, so, <laughs> no, I thought I was like, um, no, 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 we'll see. We'll see. So let, let me break down what, the, what this film's about. So I suggested now you see it uh, because it's something my brother and I were talking about and we loved it when we were kids. And uh, but I was telling when I was explaining to Elijah, I couldn't really remember what it was about because I hadn't seen it in so long. I remember the one thing <laughs> I said to you was that, like, I just remember that like people were like there, there, there's like murder involved. There's, yeah, and, when kids start and dying. You said I was like, kids. Ooh. Cry, but so so I was wrong. Kids don't start really <laughs> dying, but there is still some murder. So here's there's some, some danger. Some, yeah, some danger is involved. There's some intense shit. So <laughs> so this is what it's about. So Danny Sinclair, uh, played by uh, Johnny Picard, not Picard like in Star Trek, but Picard as in magician. He is an, yeah. He's um, not related to <laughs> yeah. the, the captain. <laughs> yeah. So Danny Sinclair is one of the three finalists in a TV contest to find the best young magician. Producer Allison Miller, who's played by our own Keely, uh, Ali, Ali Mishaka, Shakala? I don't remember. I don't Ali really Mishaka, yeah. Yeah, okay. So, so who played Keely in Phil the Future, and she was also in Cowbells, which is a movie that we'll be doing soon. She's also in Ali and AJ, the popular band in the early 2000s. They're still doing music. They're, they're, they're making bangers. a comeback. Yep. So she, she plays this producer called Allison Miller, his team producer, and she's determined that Danny will win and she will stop at nothing to achieve her aim, achieve her dream. It does not matter about what Danny wants. It's about what <laughs> he wants. Uh, um, so she's just a producer so, who gets shit yeah, done. Yeah. yeah she, she, she's, she's a aspiring reality TV producer. So you know that her life is just going to go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the, the, the main guy who's doing all this stuff, his name is Max and he is this like, accomplished magician played by the the fantastic frank langella mm -hmm. who um unlike in phantom the megaplex who had mickey rooney frank langella has a lot to do here <laughs> he's yeah. in this movie quite he could bit. have walked out at any mo moment he had a lot yeah. of time <laughs> he he decided you know what let's 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 stick it let's see where let's see where else this can go yeah. so yeah so weird things start to happen danny so so like the main thing is like is danny uh, a really accomplished magician and trickster as they keep saying or is he a real motherfucking sorcerer <laughs> yeah literally <laughs> those are the only two options too there's yeah. nothing else um so the reasons the reason why he's thinking this is because he he's making not just uh, uh things appear like snow but he's making people disappear and reappear in weird ass places um so of course he's now danny's like dude there's something wrong with me like i know, <laughs> I, know I know that this isn't just a uh just this random is not normal <laughs> but yeah everybody around them are just like no dude you're a magician all of us can pull up mechanical blows <laughs> yeah and he's like okay <laughs> and franklin jello max uh he he's mystic max. one of the people yeah mystic max he's one of the people that is trying so hard to make sure everybody realizes that that uh that danny is full of shit and that he mm -hmm. is just a really good magician so that's basically what you guys need to know mm -hmm. um so is this movie as good as i remember of course not but uh yeah, well, it, is it is it even close to being good no <laughs> it's strange it's it's such so this movie decides it so the way that this movie <laughs> decides to, to 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 deliver the narration is that um allison is just talking to the camera. They're they're pulling some Annie Hall, Woody Allen shit on us, mm -hmm. and it you Opening never dialogue. you never understand who the fuck she's talking to, <laughs> a, and b, you don't know. So this is supposed to be a reality show, right? Yeah, it's, it's supposed like, to be a reality they're, show. They're preparing to. They're shooting a reality show during it. So is all the footage that she's been shooting? Is this all live? 
because that's they what never... I was wondering. I was like, I feel like it's not. They like they 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 should have kept it all found footage. Like that would have been cool. And that's cool what gimmick. I was thinking. That would have made it really memorable if they kept that continuity of it. Like here's my footage. It's all from the perspective of the cameraman. That would yeah. have been awesome. And and they didn't do that. They kept breaking the third wall and stuff by showing the cameraman who is enjoyable as an actor yeah. that that the kid uh, his name's brendan hall i wrote it down uh, he's in, uh. he plays the secretary of energy and idiocracy that's why i was like oh my god <laughs> he's just randomly in there what, what what did you think of this what did you think now you see it <laughs> well now you see are you like glad that I, you saw it <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're like um i have a lot of opinions about this because I did remember, I remember watching it at the time on TV when I was watching the movie. I didn't remember it before when we were talking about it last week because mm -hmm. we, our nostalgia rating, I gave it like a two, I think. And mm -hmm. cause I didn't really remember it all at all. So when I was actually watching it, the reason I don't think I remember watching it is because um, the year after the prestige came out and I was like, it's, it's about competing magicians and, and, and teleporting which they throw into this movie there's yeah. teleportation randomly like the first time they teleport the three of them they're like oh what just happened know, oh let's go back to shooting the show we should probably get back and then they just never discuss it again they don't let none of them are freaking out they're just like oh we're in a different spot we totally teleport let's go back to the magician competition and it's like i felt like this was like a like a prestige prequel even though it came out the year before the prestige and i was like how, how does this work like because there's some bizarre it goes in a direction of like reality bending stuff and it's very weird not I, to mention like about decoms though is they hop right into the movies too it's just like bam danny's missing the mysterious danny it's like oh okay we're right in just like last week yeah. they're like like we're going right in he's just woof, woof, woof. like it's, yeah no there's they, like they, they don't it's so understand. weird watching Disney Channel movies because you're so I'm so used to uh, whenever I'm watching movies like you you have to deal with like three minutes of logos, yeah, or just but, like a, like you breathe for a moment before yeah. you see protagonist or anything, but they just hop nope. right in. It's um, so yeah, it's 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 weird. I, I, it it felt like that the main kid Danny was going to murder somebody at any point. Did you yeah, feel the same way? something very unnerving about him. Like when I when you His first meet him too, you see him through the window like yeah! you would see a ghost in a movie. He's just like. I don't think his audition for, I think his audition for this movie had zero lines. They just like look confused because we're yeah. all not going to know where this movie's going. <laughs> you know, do you have a power or not? We'll figure it out at the end on the last day. But yeah, no, he's he, just, he has some weird reaction shots. He picture. has some weird, like, like him and him and uh, 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 Keely. I'm just going to keep calling her Keely. Um, they both have like this weird chemistry with each other where you can tell you can't tell if like they like each other or not like it in real reminded, life it was a lot of it was a lot of twilight vibes it's like ah, <laughs> what's going on here and he's like i don't trust you but i don't want you to get hurt i don't care <laughs> i'm gonna <laughs> no, do really. it it's like what I don't yeah, know. like I don't even know like, like like towards the end when she's like caring so much about him mm -hmm. but then and he he's like caring about her but then right when he sees her again he's like Dude, get out of here what are you doing it's like what yeah. the fuck is and even like the so he has like a rival uh he's a rival buddy a, yeah, a rival brandon. magician brandon from um, san played francisco by, <laughs> yeah played played by gabriel sunday and his character too is like they have no idea what he wants to be they don't know if he wants to be an asshole or if he wants to be like a genuine good guy because like yeah, right at the and end, he's good at magic too <laughs> yeah and right at the end uh uh danny's gonna he's gonna go up on stage and Brandon just did his thing. And so like they stop by each other and he and Brandon's like, Man, I hope you have a great one. Like, and they, they like, hug each other. There, yeah. Yeah, just have and fun. And it's like, okay, it's cool. Like... And then it cuts to him in the audience, and he's like, <laughs> <laughs> and it's fucking ass. And then it and then it cuts back to him in the audience, and he's like, Wow. Wow. And then yeah. it cuts back to him and he's like, Pfft. it's such a it's such a clusterfuck. Yeah. This this yeah. entire movie was it was so bizarre. Yeah, yeah they're just fun. This I one guess, was this one just didn't this, stick with any tone. It didn't stick with any tone, and in the end of this movie, it's just basically a fuck you. Like, like yeah. there's no, there's no message. There's no, well, there's, there's I, no. I, I did, I did dig out a message, but the what ending was, was ridiculous because uh, who is it? It's Ali, Ali, Ali Mashaka's character is literally like in the beginning. She's like, "This is my footage. This is my documentary about what I think happened to Danny." And at the end, she's just like, "Ha ha, just kidding. He's right here." <laughs> I was like, <lying. laughs> "I was here the whole and time." Then she, she teleports him. Or he teleports her yeah. into like some park 
and it's, she's yeah, just it's like the weirdest but transition we're with her too and, and she's, she's still like, looking at us and being yeah, like, like where are not we touching the camera she's like whoa you always do this i still don't know how you do it watch the prestige and find out how <laughs> so so you said that you found a message what was the message oh uh to is it to be believe, is it to it, be true to, be, to your school because the beach boys already did that school. <laughs> it's, it's about believing in your own ability over something that's tangible that's what i wrote because he starts to believe that this ring is what's going to bring him the security but it's actually just him you know okay like i i saw the metaphor of that of like relying on something that but see, even something it. like that, like, like <laughs> all this, all the, like the reveal of him being a sorcerer, this movie takes so long. It's so casual too. And, and, and it's yeah, not and long. It just it, feels long. It's just like, what? And then, and then once it gets to, it gets to it, like he immediately is just like, like she's, she's like trying to warn him, like, dude, this is happening. He's like, can't you see I'm finally normal? I finally have friends. A, you're still by yourself in the corner, just like doing something <laughs> with some, with some curtains and B, like you literally You're just still an all to powerful him. super like and you, sorcerer. you literally just talked to him like a few hours ago like a few hours go by and he's like look at all these friends i made it's like these are the same people that don't like you from before yeah and they're, they're not even all, talking to you it's so they're strange looking at you they're like half friends half rivals you're right the whole time but the, the thing that yeah like and, and the that thing one, that he he treats his like super abilities as like like awkward like uh puberty he's like i don't know when to control it like i don't know i don't know if i smell bad right now if i do that's not my fault but you can be blown away by it but i don't control it that's how he kind of talks about it it's like yeah that would be really weird and that is a good idea of him not being controlled these powers but the way they handled it was so weird he's yeah. like i'm dying up here like, keep it up where's the bunny rabbit so at the the last like battle what the last like competition of the of this, <laughs> of, this of this film the climax the climax, thank you. The climax of this film is that Max is going to have Danny. He literally says it like this too. He's going to have Danny lift <laughs> an entire thousand weight, pounds. thousand thousand pound weight over his head. What could possibly go wrong? Yeah, that and was a lot of tension there. All controlled by Max. And so Max legitimately in front of his fucking parents, in front of an entire audience, tries to fucking smash his skull with a yeah. thousand pound weight and then that doesn't work right imagine right they away. just pulled a carry and it just actually killed him <laughs> no but that doesn't work right 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 <laughs> so so what does he do he just tries to kill him in more elaborate crazy ways <laughs> let's, let's let's bring out some swords all right yeah. you know what i'm gonna now i'm gonna lift him up it's like, what's your plan now, Max? They're trying to make it look like a show uh, to everyone. They're like, we're actually fighting, yeah. but it's just a part of the show. Those guys are good yeah. magicians. <laughs> he, uh, and Frank then, Langella and then, yeah, lifts him just... up. He's flying. He, uh, 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 he, that uh, shot Dan, though. Danny, Danny, like has the the circle of the ring, and he and he and he just flies down. That superhero and... <laughs> shot though. He's like, ah. Yeah. And smoke <laughs> appears, and and Max is gone. And everyone claps, and no one realizes. Oh shit. It was, Max dead. <laughs> yeah, Max is this kid just magic. murder somebody. <laughs> magic. And then that's the end of the movie. <laughs> yeah, it literally ends. That's it, it. Abruptly, no answers. There's nothing answered. No, nothing's no, answered. Look, it was there's no, there are no arcs too. There's nope. like absolutely no arcs. Like nobody <laughs> learns anything. Like I know you. Like what you said. Like I guess that's what he learned. Yeah, I but guess, it's not... but that took a lot to find out. I was like, yeah. what is this about? I don't know. I don't know. I guess this is the David. How David Blaine got famous? Yeah. I guess so. I, I remember this, this movie though because there's a scene where they first show up at the castle, which is right where the movie kind of should have started. Where I didn't like the whole yes, beginning part. Yes, there. I was I like, agree. oh, this is where it should be. This is this makes more sense, and this is what I remember of them walking around. But I remember this movie specifically because when I was watching it on TV during the commercials, they were um, uh, having commercials for Flight 29 Down with Corbin Blue, which oh, also yeah. I, I it think also has that kid, that kid, right? Yes, and I was totally like, right. That's I was where like, I recognize him. I was like, oh my god! So I, I was like, I need to rewatch Flight Twenty Nine Down. It's not on Disney Plus, but they have them on YouTube. Someone uploaded every episode of the of the two seasons. Yeah, so I man. Rewatch if them, people Flight don't, if yeah. you guys don't know about that show, it's ba <laughs> it's it's lost before Lost even got lost. It's lost for kids. The <laughs> yeah, yeah, it totally is. Yeah, no, man, I I, I totally forgot about that. So Elijah, you don't know, know something that's funny. This movie's about reality TV shows, right? Right. Yes. And the writer That's of this movie, was, yeah, that makes more this sense. This is the to me only now. movie that he's ever written that makes is sense a reality TV show producer. <laughs> so, yeah. 
It makes sense. Cause last it's week true. you're like, this is the spawn of Satan. Why would they hire this guy to make a movie? But now it makes sense considering the, the subject matter and everything. It was his perspective of how they yeah. do it. it. It's just not, it, it, it nothing <laughs> sticks. Nothing just, nothing fits the mold. Everything, you know, like when you're watching a kid put a triangle in the square. <laughs> That's what this entire movie is. Um, yeah, no, this movie's odd. Like, what so, would you rate it then? What your nostalgia rating was like a two, right, or a three? No, my my nostalgia rating I think was like a four because I did love. I my brother and I really. Oh liked yeah, because you guys did. watched it. Yeah. yeah. What would your real rating then be for this? Movie? Uh, two, probably like a two, probably a two because yeah, like a two. It's it's still there. There's still plenty of moments that are hysterical, <laughs> and and there are genuine like scares in it too. And there's like there's some tension. Yeah, there's but some tension. it's all over the place. So the performances <laughs> are all over the place. The writing. Well, you gave it a two. I gave it a two. Yeah. Uh, <sighs> and right now, like ranking like all of our Disney or decom movies, this is definitely at the bottom. Um, actually, no. You know what? Phantom of the Megaplex is still at the bottom for me. Because that one, at least this one. The only like, revival I have with Phantom of the Megaplex is just all the film. film. Yeah. What is it called? I don't know. Homages, I guess. Yeah. Probably. That's the only so, reason I like it. That's why I like it more than this one. Do you want to watch DCOMs? Do, do are you, you like interested our, in DCOMs? Do you like our podcast? Do you then, like popcorn? Then come on our show, History of Popcorn. Tell us what your favorite DCOM is, and we may just reach out to you to have a session. We do everything. If you say Zoom, no, so guess what? too bad yeah we we're probably going to reach out to some of you guys listening because we know that we have some people that already want to come on so that's why we're opening up our doors and inviting everyone to come talk decoms with us so comment what your favorite decom is and we may just reach out to you for the episode of it and the revisiting of it cool thanks for coming again this week uh checking out history of popcorn but doing good things by listening to the smaller podcast um, thank you bye bye <laughs>